You wouldn't remember, would you? Though? No, I don't remember any of the shows, right? Anyway. No. You're not. No. No. Hello, everybody. My name is Farmer Phil, and we're here with Father Phil and Uncle Phil. Is I know is that the right word? To, I don't know. It's Uncle, it's, anyway. Uncle, yeah, Uncle. So we're going to talk about um, the more the history of the farm and the sheep my father used to have his Hampshire Downs and my uncle and his limousines and what the cattle my grandfather used to have. So I suppose we start off with what cattle did Grandad have? Herefords. Herefords. And short, shorthorn cows and Hereford bull Herford. and a few pedigree Hereford cows. We wouldn't have had that many. No, about 10 or 12. It was a very small farm. Yeah. And uh, he sold bulls. He'd have three or four bulls every year to sell. So sometimes he'd go to Carrick and Sharon, the February sale in Carrick. And basically, they were, most of them were sold at home here. Yeah. Local. Local. Um, what was the, the story? He went with a bull to. Was it for a great grandfather? He went to a bull to the, the Longford Fair. Oh, that was a bullock in, 19, in the 30s. For the price? Yeah. And yeah, they, were, they went to the October Fair in Longford with the bullock. And walk, they were getting, walked them in. Walked them in and they were getting 12 pound. 12 oh, pound what year would that have been? In the mid late 30s. In the late 30s. No, the economic sure. war. The economic was, war was on between Ireland and England at the time. Yeah. Another Brexit. Yeah. And uh, he was told not to take less than 12 pounds. No, 14. 14. And, and he was getting 12. Yeah. He was getting 12. And they brought home the bullock. <coughs> and they kept him until March. And they brought him back in. And they took 4 pounds for him. No, 4 pounds. Yeah. They took him. I took it. I was glad to get it. Glad yeah. to get it. Yeah. Not much different than today. No. No. No, no you're even, the money is bigger, but the, the margins are less. Every, every bit is tight. Yeah. So, the, when, so, Grandad had Herefords and, and Shorthorn. Shorthorn then. cows, and he, at the, the start of the dairy, and we milked Shorthorn cows. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, So when did the first limousine come then? First limousine was bought, we bought a cow off a neighbour and she was in calf to a limousine bull, a Hereford cow and the only reason why we bought her was she, this was long and woman and she came up here to see would Grandad buy the, buy the cow off her because she was afraid she was going to be stolen. Yeah. And she had her all painted with Hall's distemper, yellow distemper, and this were painted sealants. <laughs> And on, uh, on we the bought cow. the cow, and she had a limits and heifer calf, and we kind of were leaning towards continentals at the time, and we went to a sale and goffs to buy to buy a different bull to buy a scimitar. No, because they were more like the Hereford that we were used to, and we were above in goffs at the sale, and this little this limits and bull got out of us. Somebody left the door open in the stall, and he got out and he walked down by us and. Grandad says to me, do you know what? He says, that had be a nice little bull to bring home. Mm. And we bought him, and he, he came into the ring. It was a disaster of a sale. And we bought him for 725 guineas. Yeah. And he was bred in, the, he come from the Somerset Herd in Wexford. Yeah, Somerset Nelson. Uh, and he was by a bull, <clears throat> one of the first bulls that was imported into the country, a bull called Hockey. And uh, we had him then for... How did you get him back from the sale? We come home and they went back up... Single cow trailer. The, the next, single, the next. single cow trailer on what? Uh, on, um, on what had we at the time? The uh, Austin 1100. No, it was a golf. Or red, was it a golf? The red golf. The red golf. Yeah. 78. We'll and we went back up and collected him the next day. I went to Bally... I was, I had to go to Bally Mahan. No, he wouldn't turn around in it. He had to... Oh, he had to a, a, Mar a Mark 1 golf. Yeah. Yeah. A Mark 1 golf. Diesel golf. Oh, not a great job. But anyway, you've lost us over. Yeah. But they, they and didn't brought him home to and, in and back out. The first calves were that was in <coughs> seventy nine. The first calves were born in eighty, and we sold them. The heifers we finished them, and Michael Farrell's dad, Mel Farrell, brought them up to Ballymun. Where there was a factory operating in Ballymun at the time, and your man sent back word to see how we any more of them. Mm. And uh, the bullocks went to Ballymahan Mart and a Welsh, there, were, there was a live export trade to England and or across the, to the UK at the time. And uh, a Welsh farmer bought the, 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 bullocks, the bullocks. store bullocks of Ballymahan and we got a notorious price for them. And we had, that was the start, the limits the start, and we bought the first piano we in, in 
Oh, ten, um, ten years later. 80, 89 in, in McGrath's and the Curra. 89 and 90. Curra Grange. She, and she was one of the, the original imports. And she had a bull calf at foot and she was in calf. And she had a heifer calf the following spring. And then in 1990 we bought a heifer. A heifer of a sale in Nias. In Nias. And then the harm was... And, and and the, the, another, we bought another one the next, the next year. The next year. In, in Nutterstown. At a sale in Nutterstown. Was it a Roger McCarrick's was it? Was it a Roger McCarrick's? Was it a Roger McCarrick's? Yeah, but it was, aye, the same was a Roger in McCarrick's. It was a Lutherstown heifer. A Lutherstown heifer. And uh, the, the first cow we bought, that's all the character. She was old. She was 19 years of age. Yeah. And then the next one was only a young cow. A young cow and she was she bred lots of lovely, great cattle. And we got, we had the champion Oh, sorry, we had the reserve champion at the very first premier sale in Ross Grey, and I sold it for three thousand guinea, three thousand pound. And the next sale, the autumn sale that year, we had the next calf. That first fellow was almost two year old, and the next fellow was just over a year old, and he was champion, and we sold it for ten, for three thousand. John Moroni from Corravin bought him, and. Uh, she had heifers in between and all, and all won prizes at shows. Yeah, well, we bought them in Dardy S. She was second in a class of 22. Yeah. Heifers. Then. And then uh, the TV hit his then and that. And <coughs> took them all. Well, oh. the, the video I'd put it in there, the video of the, the bulls standing at, on top of the... That's one of the bulls. That's what's all in us great. That's that was the, one of the bulls. That was the child. That was... Uh, and um, all the rosettes Jumbo. and the trophy. That was Jumbo. Yeah. Jumbo. Yeah. He was, uh, we showed him... 11 times yeah and he was only beaten once by flambe with a, a stop ball in the palestine herd yeah was the only ball that ever that he was beaten he was a senior ball and our ball was only a junior ball but he he was that's he was the only time ever he was beaten at the, yeah. at the local shows and um, um bef before we had we got stricken with tb how many pedigree limousines had we females we probably had 30. yeah more than 30. We used to have sell about 10 bulls a year. Yeah. Well, for a few couple of years, well, for three or four years. Three or four years. Then, just going nicely. Just yeah. starting to get just one. Just going nicely and doing the same. show and that was grand. And, uh, oh, how many other cows then did we have? Oh, well, commercial cows? Yeah. I wish you must have had 60. Along with the dairy cows. Yeah. Along with the dairy cows and the pedigree cows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You had 30, 30 pedigree cows and you had 60 commercial cows and you had 40 <laughs> dairy cows. Yeah. That's what we roughly what we had. Yeah, and this then the time we tested sure there was what well, there was in two thousand and four there was over four hundred tested. Yeah, big lit and small. Yeah, and that and thirty sixty four of them went down on the first round of testing. Yeah, because I lost you lost all the dairy cows and I lost all the pedigree limits and cows. And 15, 15 pedigree cows went down. Went down in the, the first long, test. Long, long test lost yeah. it just completely in the maths now. Yeah, just absolutely. There's no point. It was it was pointless because we were plagued for. Let's see, we're locked up for so long then. We're, we're plagued for six years. Yeah. With TB from 2004 to 10. Yeah. Absolutely plagued. You'd just be clear of it when you'd be back into it again. Every six or eight months you were. And then we got clear and you were. <coughs> remember when you were. Oh, I remember the calves. calves. Rare calves and they went down. Okay, yeah, but that's the last belt we had. Yeah, that was the last. Yeah. Yeah. We had nothing since. Oh. And we've not done. That was in 10, in we'll 10 or 11. We'll save that for another video and we'll talk all about the. The Dax is definitely a good video. Um, the sheep then, when did you get your first sheep? Or did Brandon well, we always, always have sheep? Always have sheep. Always have sheep. Yeah, we always kept. He used to keep 15 or 16 or 18 years. And then we got Barry Clare and... We kept Cole, a few more. Cole Hill was starting to keep more. And we were up to about 80 or 90 years we used to keep. Well, 80 years. Oh, well, all, all sorts. Oh, all sorts. Yeah. Mostly Chevy. Chevy across. But as your lambs in Drumshamba, yeah. we go down every... Well, it's earlier than this now, September. Uh, September time, and you buy a lot of weathers and... Buy, and, and buy, all we used to well. buy maybe 20 or 25 weather lambs, and we'd buy maybe 10 new lambs, just for to have coming yeah. on for, to make you the next year. And the, 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 the weathers would be finished in the spring, and we'd be sell them in exactly. March or April. Pound together. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. And... Uh, we Aiken kept home. the yours down, we're up with 80 or 90 yours we'd have. And I came home to the farm in 85. And in 86, the boss said, you better get a few pedigree sheep. Yeah. That would be a good idea. And we bought pedigree Hampshire Downs. Six of them. Yeah. 
Terry Robinson. A.T. Robinson. Um, I put an ad in the Farmer's Journal. You did? Yeah. To, to get Looking for Hampshire. six, well, Hampshire down yours. Yeah. And he answered the ad. And he was selling out his, his, his flock because they were the wife's sheep. Yeah. And he was selling out the flock. And um, at the time, the boss wasn't too interested in going to the north. Yeah. Things wasn't good up there. Yeah. And uh, we met him in Uri. Yeah. So we he brought down the six sheep in the trailer. He picked out the six sheep and put them in the trailer and brought them down south side of the border. We picked them up and brought them home. Yeah. And uh, we ended up one of the biggest flocks of hamsters in the in in Ireland at the time. Yeah. What um, years what years were that when you had the I mean, largest flock? Oh, the oh, I was around ninety two, ninety one, ninety two. Yeah. Would be the largest flock. Um, largest flock of pedigree Hampshire Downs. Yeah, we were, we were in here the old pedigree at that stage. Yeah, how many had you at that time? With over a hundred joes. Over a hundred joes. Mm -hmm. Over a hundred joes, and um, we're keeping our own your lambs all the time. And why you went to the? Oh, we we going. Well, you would factory off a certain amount, and you'd have pick out rams to sell. Your people, twenty or twenty five yeah. rams. We'd sell twenty five or thirty rams a year. Yeah, and you'd there'd be a sale, and you'd bring a lot of your lambs to it, and. We showed in Dublin the next year. I showed in Dublin in RDS. Yeah, it was a great thing to get out of the yard and we had a good, a really good ram lamb, and we went up and he was fourth in his class. Yeah, out of a big entry. But that time there'd be a lot of sheep come up in the north. We had great friends in the north who used to come down, and uh, you'd meet them at all the different shows. Yeah, and went up and judged a few shows. I, I remember and, going with you up the north to judge a show. We judged in Castle Island. Yeah, and I judged it. I judged in the same field. I judged in half a dozen places over the years up yeah. there. And, it wasn't too bad, we were going on grand and we started having trouble with the lamb and when we were keeping our own sheep, yeah. we got a deficiency built up in the in the flock. Yeah. Uh it was mostly it was an iodine, 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 iodine and, and other mineral trace elements built up and it just we we had trouble. Yeah. A lot of trouble one year and look at I was after getting married in eighty five and the show the RDS kinda went wall up it wasn't anymore it finished up in probably 94 or 93 yeah. and there was a show in Tullamore but it wasn't the same and I just lost interest I got more interested in machinery and sure was trying to make a few pound yeah and the, the sheep was grand to keep a few pound together but no they wouldn't pay all the bills yeah and well, 2006 that was when the last one went the last sheep we had here I someone rang me Conlinch it was, could have been Conlinch check that out could have been kind of rang me and he um, had someone looking for a couple of Hampshire down yaws. Yeah. And we had a couple of crossbreds still. There was a, a mixed brag. Yeah. And a fella came from, who's up from Kent? Yes. Nice. 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 that country. And he came down here and we run in all the sheep and there was a yaw after Yenna. Yeah. And whatever we had, it was about 25 I suppose. Yeah. And uh, he loaded the whole of hop into the trailer and that was in March 2006. Yeah. And that was the last sheep was ever around the place. Yeah. Was now yours since? Yeah, so I, I can just hardly likely will be one either. I can just about remember the sheep looking down on the sheep from the bottoms. I don't remember going to any shows with the limousines or anything. I can remember mm -hmm. having a limousine cow called the... called Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. I had Rainbow came at sunrise and just get sunset or something like that. Well, it could have been all right, but it, it was it was grand. But if you were showing, you couldn't contact. Yeah, time consuming. It was awful time consuming. Yeah. And I seen us coming back from a bit of a sheep sales and there'd be three people waiting in the yard looking for bailing done. Yeah. And you'd be out half the bloody night then bailing. Yeah. And at that time there wasn't much mobile phones or anything. It's not like nowadays if you're not in the field in five minutes now there's someone else there before you. Yeah. It's it's got to be an awful cutthroat in the industry altogether. At that yeah. time it didn't time didn't seem to matter and you know, that was it, but yeah. nowadays that wouldn't work at all. Yeah. No way. So I think that's I suppose just while we're talking about Grandin and his lifestyle, Grandin had pigs. Yeah. Always kept a couple of sows. Yeah. Four, yeah. five sow, six sows I think was the most I ever seen mm -hmm. here. And that that was for, for selling the So all the the Bonos or the the, the, the wieners. Yeah, he got rid of them in, in 90, 80, 1984, 85. They were the first to go. They were, they this, were it, this was really a mixed farm. You had dairy yeah. cows, beef cows, sheep, and pigs. Yeah. 
like it was a truly well, mixed but that farm. was because you, you, you oh, always had something to sell yeah. you always had keep something yourself to sell. going yeah. there were several different things wouldn't be ready the cattle wouldn't be ready to sell until the back end of the year off the grass and you had a few sheep in the early part of the summer and, and the then pigs. you had the pigs uh, the pigs basically were all year round yeah yeah the two litres of pigs in a year yeah and it was there's nothing wrong with it, but the setup was primitive enough at the time. Yeah. And it was either mother eggs or get out. So, get he, out, get out so he got out of them. Yeah. And I remember, I remember pigging the pigs down in the pig's day. Yeah. You hardly remember the pig's day. I remember the pig's day. It's in them back where the boat was. All oh, right. There was a little shed there. And yeah. He had it all done up and it all insulated in the roof. And I did a great job done. But yeah. it was suitable for two sows, but it was a wheelbarrow job. It was. Yeah clean them out every day or two days or whatever and do you know it was yeah. a lot of time and it, it was just large whites you had no they were land race land cross, race. cross large white land race cross land race. yeah you yeah. used to like the crossbred sow yeah and uh, well you got the hybrid vigour and you know, yeah, you'd be off down to Balladuff and you'd go to the Martin Balladuff Martin and Balladuff and Carrie Gallon now that was the two places and he'd sell it and, and he'd sell an odd, an odd litter locally now you know at that time you had the people that would buy a pig to fatten it Buy a couple of yeah. pigs. Yeah, yeah the people that buy a couple of pigs and they get them slaughtered and cured and yeah. at the house. Well, it was changed times now. That's like you're going back forty years. Yeah, a long time ago. You know, but yeah. that's how it worked and that's what it, what you done and to get by. Yeah, that's that was it. Like, there's no, it wasn't just you now we're just into specialised fucking black and white calves. Yeah, and nothing else. We have to go back to a few sheep and a few pigs. Suppose maybe. I don't know. But that was it. Yeah. But it worked. Yeah. It worked. And there everyone got by. Everybody yeah. had a couple of pigs. But the expense wasn't in it. They had yeah. all the scraps in the house, all the potato peelings. It was a cycle. Yeah. All the leftovers. They, uh, the pigs got all that. All but you had orchard then, you see, down there, and, and there was four of the 50 trees in it. Yeah. And the pigs was let down there, and they had apples. Remember the time they saw a pig down there? They were nearly a fortnight oh, down there. Yeah, before we know it. Before he knew the history. Yeah, you fed it to gate. Yeah. You, yeah. you go down at the gate and shout, and the two, the two, there was two sows there. And, and they come up. running up. And you fed them. Well, in the harvest table, we were yeah. busy. Yeah. I know that I just about remember it now. You're back in the 1970s. You've you seen that the, 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 were there to eat. Nobody ever bought them. You've back in the 1970s now. Yeah. And he says, do you know something? There should be a sow coming near Joseph Parrow and there. We've got to have a look at her. Actually, the pigs must have been three weeks old. We had an awful job to get them caught. Actually, there was... There was, there was, there was a, the loss of them. There was 11 or 12 of them. There was, there was a good 12. There was a great litter. Yeah. 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 And she had them been all at the wall at the old ruins of the castle. In the castle. She went to bed. Them. bed. She gathered up all the bits of grass. Old bits of grass and, and, and old ivy and stuff kicking about. Natural her. thing. Yeah. yeah. She done her own thing. Yeah. It was, wasn't a loss of them. Yeah. It was perfect. It was perfect. But then they, they all got red right down there and they would fall and apples and all that. Yeah. It was a cycle, it all used up, everything got used up, yeah. nothing went to waste. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure, we might get an orchard put in there now. Well, that's the intention, is this to put in an orchard now this November. Yeah, right, go I'd say we have it sprayed off, we have our square sprayed off, and so hopefully on Sunday I'll get out there with the 35 and the, the springtime Hara, or that Fergus and Hara I pulled out of the hedge. No, the Triple K. Triple K, whatever it is. Yeah, Triple K, not Ferguson. It's not Ferguson. Or whatever it is, get out and get, get that done, make a video on that. But yeah, so is there anything else then? Mm, not really, that was it. It was just, it was just different to what's happening now. Everything yeah. evolves and everything moves on. And yeah. That was it. Yeah. In hindsight, we probably should have got into more pigs. Yeah. And got more modern nice. But then it, it had to be very specialised. Yeah. And the way it's gone now, you're either, you're either a dairy farmer, a sheep farmer, yeah, pig farmer or a pig farmer or, or a beef farmer. Or a beef farmer. There's not, there's not that many mixed farms left. Yeah, there's a few now. There yeah. is a few. There's a few people that have sheep and and, and, few, and, and, and beef cattle. cattle. Yeah. yeah, that's generally the mix. But the dairy boys doesn't have sheep in general because yeah. the, they rob the cows in the spring. They rob the cows in the springtime. You see, yeah. the yaw like is is she's great, but she have no grass now. But she's great for tickling the grass. Like, so the have everything has its yeah. place. And if you had a few yaws at the minute, you'd have no ragwort. Yeah. Well, we don't have ragwort really. We do. We have a couple of red, we have two rented farms that oh, yeah. are plagued with, with fucking ragwort. And if you had a few sheep now and land them up to it here now for a couple of months, that was then the year ragwort. Yeah. They'd eat the ragwort. They'd clean it out. The only trouble is, they probably wouldn't stay where they'd be put. Yeah. There's, there's no fences to suit that job. Yeah, but, but your sheep are, are devils for finding holes in a fence, anyways. Oh, yeah, but you remember. But their sole purpose in life is to get to the other side, side of the fence. fence. <laughs> or someone else's land anyway they've seen a few years ago we set the, the tops of the beach yeah. on Coal Hill and there was we told your man no horny sheep yeah 
and of course there was 50 horny lambs on whatever you point to it, a couple of hundred lambs. Yeah. Were, every word before they they never knew anything about grass. Yeah. They had all the briars and brambles and all the bits at the back of the hedge. They ate the hedges out of the place. Yeah. Never left the team. They just ate the back of the ate they, the They hung onto the road. They ate themselves out onto the road. They were on, I think we had eight phone calls Christmas Day. Yeah. They said the sheep was on the road. There weren't our bloody sheep. So that's why we don't get sheep anymore. Yeah. We have no fences, but well, they worked. It. The rest of them knew what the beat, beat tops was, and they they didn't furbish the way. But these horny boys, oh man, they didn't know anything about grass or beat or grass or beat tops or any beat or anything like that. Yeah. Back to the ditches is all they were interested in. Yeah, yeah. So you know? I think that is it. We may go. We'll cover you now, will it? Uh, that'll cover today's video. We'll go off now and we'll roll up a lock of barley, bar barley for a few hours and make another video. But anyways, I'm gonna leave it at that. So. As always, videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. That is it from us. Good luck. So, this week is Ag Mental Health Week. A week to remind ourselves that we do need to look after ourselves. Not only physically, but mentally. There's no point having the best of stock and the best of equipment and the best of crops if we don't look after ourselves mentally. So, Bertie wanted to be on camera, didn't you Bertie? So, just al always remember that, look, at farming is one of the toughest jobs out there. We have an awful lot of pressures and stresses. Bertie, stop you licking the table. We have an awful lot of stresses out there between the weather, bad prices, equipment breaking, livestock dying, the weather, the weather, the weather and financial issues. There is so many stresses. It's, farming is big money gambling. Every year we buy cattle, we grow crops, and we never know what our outcome is going to be. Bertie, please get off the table. And um, it's just, it can, it can take its toll. Farming can take its toll on one's mind. And we should never be ashamed to talk about how we're feeling. And never be ashamed to tell someone, if you're having a bad day, Tell someone you're having a bad day. It's not going to do anyone any harm. And it might just help you. Especially if you're going through a tough time with with different things. I know myself that it is great to talk to people. I have suffered myself with depression before I met Liv. I, it was something that used to affect me quite a lot. But anyways, look, I know what depression is like. I know how it feels. And it's not the nicest thing to go through. But... I put money on it that everybody at some stage in their lives goes through it and knows what it's like. It, it'll always do someone good to talk. And even if you don't want to talk to someone you know, a family member or anything like that, always you can always reach out to the Samaritans, Pieta House. Bertie, what is wrong with you? He just wants to steal the attention. Whatever is wrong with him, he's awful intention-seeking today. But you can always reach out to someone. And if you're going through a tough day... You can leave a comment down below. You can let it out there anonymous. I don't think anyone is going to judge you for whatever someone could have to say. But if it, it might help someone out there. Okay. So anyways, for the second time in this video, that is it from me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Mind yourselves. Look after yourselves. And good luck.